Okay, let's take a couple of minutes to talk about the K40 and the K400. The K40 and the 400 are identical pumps in construction, other than the fact that the K400 is uh, about a foot longer, so it gives it a lot more volume. And it also gives it some more weight. So, But let's just talk about the K40 and the K400 in regards to the annual maintenance and any res resolution of any problems that may involve leakage. The first thing you want to do with this pump is take the web assembly, which is designed as your handle, but it's also a carrying strap, and take it and open the web up as far as possible. Now, when I say it was work as a carrying strap, we can do that as well. But we need to do that so we're going to be able to uh, access uh, different parts in the pump. Now, the pump comes in two, fa two phases. You got the high pressure phase, which is this, which is actually this phase right here, which is nothing but the K100 or K200 pump that's been deposited inside of this other pump. And then the high, the high volume phase, which is this phase, which actually, if you look, look at this carefully, this is a K100 or K200, and um, it functions inside of this other pump. So what we want to do, the first thing, is to remove the screws underneath this O-ring that's at the, at the top of the top cap. So you roll the O-ring back and remove the two screws. There's one on each side. Then what we do is just grab, you got to twist the cap so you can release this plunger, and then grab the plunger and just pull the whole unit back out. Now, if you look at this unit, this unit is identical to the K100 and the K200 unit, the plunger unit. So go back to that video and study that video as to how to service this part of the pump, which is very simple. The next thing is remove this, this cover o-ring and now the pump is basically you're in the high pressure side of the pump. Now there are two screws in, on this side and they're located right below the tabs that are attached to the pump so we just get in there and remove those screws so you can access this. It just takes a couple seconds Then what I do is I simply grab this section, this cap, and you're going to have to twist a little bit because it wants to set itself. Grab it and remove it. Okay. Now you have a cap here with a, a little blue ring inside. That blue ring is, we call it an alignment ring. It's, it's critical in this pump, although it's not critical in other pumps. Make sure that stays inside that cap. Now what we do is we simply grab this portion of the pump and withdraw it. If you see, there's going to be a couple of O-rings here. This O-ring is not a critical O-ring, although it does act as a buffer when we're pumping so that it can go up against uh, uh, and absorb shock when people do a little too aggressive pumping. This O-ring is the critical O-ring in this pump to, to a large degree, and I would suggest that you clean this O-ring off, take it out, clean it off, and again, check this surface. The surface ident is incidentally identical to the surfaces on the K100 and 200. It's just a larger scale and we do have a different bottom here. Clean those surfaces off thoroughly. Again, look at the pump, the O-ring I mean, and look at the O-ring and make sure that it's clean, it doesn't have any cracks in it. And then the last thing I do with this one also is I take it and stretch it between my thumbs and then I stretch it another inch or two. Don't be afraid to do that. Once you've done that, when you replace this O-ring back onto the position it's supposed to be in, it's going to be really loose. You're going to say, oh, that's way too loose. No, it's not. That's exactly what you want because the outside of the O-ring actually fits against the inside diameter of the tube. So you want it loose so that it creates that, that's, that seal. Now, this is a critical part. <clears throat> After you've lubed this pump, just like you've lubed the other ones, you need to reinsert this plunger assembly. Be careful in reinserting this because if you notice this O-ring is really loose so you're going to have to work it to make sure that that O-ring goes in there perfectly. But when you do that it should go in nice and smoothly. In fact you can test it by putting your hand over the end and see it didn't work. <laughs> so 
There we go. You can test it by putting your hand over the end of the nozzle and pushing on it. And if it seals up tight, you've got a perfect seal. If you've got anything other than that, then go back and take another look at that O-ring. Make sure that O-ring is properly placed and it's been stretched enough. You've got a proper seal in there right now. So you just let that go right to the bottom. Now I grab the strap, this webbing strap. And this is kind of critical because some people seem to get it confused. Take this strap and keep it flat, move it up, move your hand all the way up it, and make sure you got it, you got it twisted and you just grab the cap and just set it over the top. Now what you want is this, the handle part of the strap on the opposite side of the label. The handle part should be on the opposite side of the label and the strap should be flat all the way across. When you do that, the holes will line up that you have to replace the screws in, they will line up perfectly. And what you do then is you work this cap down and then you try to, then you line up the holes. Replace the screws. There it's lined up. Then we replace the screws in there. Then I grab, and sometimes you may have to tip it upside down, but you need to grab this cylinder and pull this out. This is the inner pump. Remember the O-ring that we took off of there, that's the O-ring that goes over the top, is a cover. Replace that O-ring by just slipping it down on the pump aways. Now that we have serviced this, remember we serviced this plunger assembly just like we do on the K100 or 200. So we replace this plunger assembly into the into the pump. Make sure that it's in properly. Line the holes up so that the the screws match. And then what you do is you replace the screws. Then we go back. And we, after the screws, the screws have been replaced, we roll this O-ring that we had in there over the top of the screws. Now that O-ring does a couple things. It covers the screws, but it also creates a cushion when we're, and when we're locking this together. Now this pump is ready to function. We put it back into this slot, and we got the high pressure side, turn the handle, and now we got the high volume side. So essentially, that's the simplicity of the pump. If you have any problems whatsoever in doing this, don't hesitate to call us at K-Pump. We'll be happy to guide you through the process.